Welcome, Neil. Good evening, Ryan. How are you doing today? I'm all right. Yeah, it's been a long, busy day, but looking forward to our chat together. Yep. I should probably say, how are you doing tonight? As it is afternoon for us, but evening for you. Yeah, very much so. It's uh, just got nine o'clock in the UK at the moment, and we're we've got a big storm hitting us at the moment. So, well, for anybody tuning in for the first time. Uh, this is Teach Me How to Wreck Some. We go over kind of an introductory into what the teams are that we're going to be facing in the next week. Uh, today, we have Neil Williams on. Neil Williams is one of the horse members of the Apocalypse, one of the comms team for Wrexham. You'll hear his sweet tones as you watch the games previously on audio, but now on video as well. Uh, in color, Neil also is uh, as a a studious farmer who is the the papa to a sow named Matilda, who has her own fame, if you will. Uh, is there anything else I'm missing, Neil? I have my own business as well, Ron. Yeah. Oh, I have a Whitchurch ph Photography. Ph yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, so if you... I came, out of, I came out of farming because I was working in farming full time and jumped into the deep end and bought a photography business, which is going from strength to strength to strength. Doing, been doing it now seven years. Wow. Wow. Well, so anybody that is in the area, anybody visiting in the area, um, with call church in. photography. Yeah. yeah, call in. It's about 14 miles from Wrexham. So it's a bus ride away or a 20 minute car ride away. So it's yeah, call yes. in anytime and say hello. Got lots Ex of Wrexham exactly. merchandise. I would like to go next time I'm out. And if I could get one of those 80s style photos with the black background where I'm here, but there's also one of me looking off in the background, <laughs> if that's possible. We can have a go. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, Neil, thank you for coming on and um, teaching me how to wreck some the crew way. First and foremost, who is Crew Alexandra? Crew Alexandra, basically, Crew is mainly known for one of the main train station hubs in the UK, mm. to be honest. Towns slightly bigger than Wrexham. Um, for me, I'm lucky. I'm about halfway between Crew and Wrexham. It's about 14 miles to Crew for me and 14 oh, wow. miles to Wrexham. So I'm sitting in Witcher, smack bang in the middle. Um, Crew have been a, um, a long time member of the Football League. They've been, they were in the uh, league. One for many many seasons have been up to the the, the championship, but uh, recently they've come on hard times. Uh, their support base mm. is, is quite small. Um, they play at Gresty Road, but I think they've they've called themselves a new stadium now. But quite a big stadium. But um, it's a look. It's I would say it's our most local game as a crow flies uh, playing crew, but it's never been really known as a as a local derby. Mm. Um, and traditionally, whenever we played crew, it was always on Boxing Day. Now, Boxing Day in the UK, I don't know whether the Americans, they, they have Boxing Day, don't they? But which is the day after Christmas. Yeah, we, we don't have it, but um, we need it and we should be celebrating it as well. Yeah, yeah you get an extra day off work as well. For exactly. It, so. Yeah. <laughs> so traditionally, we always used to play them on Boxing Day, whether it be home or away. But uh, I guess because of... The proximity of crew and Wrexham and the, the, the large crowds we now get at Wrexham, um, the authorities, the, the police, and um, whoever else involved may have decided to put it to a, a Saturday game. I mean, they've kept it to a three o'clock kickoff, which is, which is great. But um, yeah, there's, there's going to be a, a full away support from from crew of like 1,200, and, and Wrexham will be full with an extra 9,000. So there's never been any sting in the tail between crew and um, mm. Wrexham fans, as far as I know. So, uh, yeah, it, it was always a great day out for Boxing Day because from Wrexham, it's only, you know, a 40-minute journey. Yeah, and it, which isn't far. That's, uh, I mean, for going down to four hours away, you know, Stockport, and you you had all these long uh, drives from the National League. Oh, this season is totally different because the majority of the games now are in the Midlands or in the northwest of the UK, which I think there's only four down around London this year. So, yeah, crew is classed as a local derby because they are, are, are 
our closest team that we play this year in the, in the football league with them and, and Tranmere. But yeah, and, and again, we play them in a few weeks' time in the in the EFL Cup as well at Crew. So, um, but no, they've got a great stadium. It's located brilliantly, just like Wrexham, because it's right next to the just around the corner from the train station. They play in red and white, the same as Wrexham. So I should imagine Wrexham are playing in their their away kit. Uh, hopefully not the white kit because I didn't like it on Saturday. Yeah. It yeah. Didn't do us any favors whatsoever in the white kit. I just. I don't the, think our players the, can see this on the Saturday. Alternative. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we can get the black one into use, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would hope they'd be playing in the black black one again, but it'll be a feisty affair on Saturday because you know crew are doing quite well at the moment. Wrexham were doing really well until Saturday. I was at the the Grimsby game where I thought we played our best we played all season for a whole ninety minutes, but Saturday at Stockport, I had the pleasure of going there with Mark to commentate. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first 20 minutes there, I thought we were we were very good. We could have scored a couple of goals, but we didn't. And they scored on the break, and then we fell apart. Yeah. So it's... Saturday is going to be a big, big test for Wrexham again. Um, but as derbies go, I, I, I'm sure you know you'll know Ram, but a lot of the medical listeners won't know. Our local derby was always Chester, which again is in Chester. Was, the county of Cheshire and, and crews in the county of Cheshire. So um, that was our big local derby with, with Chester, but there are a couple of leagues now below us, so it'll be a few years before we play them again. So as I said earlier, as the crew flies, crew is our closest team that we're playing this season, so it is classed as our our local derby. And um, it should be an entertaining game on Saturday. I'm sure um, Mr Parkinson's had a few choice words with the players after the Stockport game. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. the team will all be revved up for the game against Crew. Now, and I should warn you, um, it's not my control. And every time someone mentions, uh, I guess I got to say it, uh, Chester uh, on this pod, there's an incredible amount of boos uh, that can be heard. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> again, again, I'm under no control about this. It just happens. So just for your reference, each time that a wonderful club's name is mentioned, um, I have no control. That just is going to happen. Well, they're only 10 miles away from us. So that's uh, the, the thing with the, with Chester, but they were our, our local rivalry. I mean, and there was always the idiots that came out for those games who didn't want to go to a football game. They were just looking for a, a fight outside the ground Oof. or inside the mm. ground. No. And then, and then the, the police got involved and they created what was called a bubble, which is still bubbles going on in the UK, which you'll never have heard of. No, I haven't. Where, where the fans, because of the trouble that happened at both both grounds, all the fans had to buy tickets to the clubs. And then the bubble was it had to be transported mm. via coach from one mm. football ground direct to the fo- other football ground without going independently and going by car. They had to go on a bus. Wow. Basically, and that's what they called a bubble. Wow. I, I didn't know that. And so I just thought that there was an incredible amount of transportation and organization logistics in the UK that you guys as teams had already decided, look, we're just going to get a couple of charter buses and we're going to go as a group. But it, it's actually the result of the violence. Mitigating the games, violence. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. And when was that? How long ago was that? About oh, within while well, we've been in the national league, definitely, yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone wow. was the bubble going to Chester. You couldn't wow. travel independently to a, a Chester game, and, and Chester fans could never um, travel independently to Wrexham. And they all had to come on buses. Now, is that going to be the same for Crew? Does that no, still no, apply? Never happened with Crew because okay. I say there's no. There's no feistiness between Crew and Wrexham, you know. They're they're just football teams. There's no there's no bitterness between them. Although mm. I, I mean, in the village I live in, there's a, there's a couple of Crew players, sorry, Crew players, crew, crew fans who are going on Saturday to Wrexham and really looking forward to the atmosphere because they say the atmosphere at Crew is is very very poor. But there are a a group of fans who who stand behind the goal, the Crew youngsters who are are not the nicest of people. So. Um, Every club has their their minority of idiots, fools, whatever yeah. you want to call them. You know, um, 
I mean, that goes from the National League, even lower leagues, right up to the Premier League. Every club has them, um, which which is a shame for ninety nine percent of the people who actually go and watch the football matches. Yeah, yeah, and so Crew is not really a rival to us, and in historically hasn't looked at us as a rival. Um, could some of that wind change just because of the notoriety, the cameras, the owners? Very, very true, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, that's that's made a huge difference to us because I think every football team that comes to the race course or whether we go to their ground, they want to beat us because mm-hmm. we're classed as uh, oil money. You know, we've got money in the club. Um, I think there's a lot of jealousy maybe, um, but that's only by, again, by a minority of fans. But yeah, I think everybody sees coming to the race course to play Wrexham as a cup final and they would really love to beat us on our own turf. On, well, when I say our own turf, Ryan, I mean on our own football pitch. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And, and get a, you know, a scalp. I mean, there's only uh, so far this season, MK Dons have done that to us. And, um, you know, last year, as you know, we were invincible at home. We, we only drew one game and won every other game last season. Because I think the crowd at Wrexham winning at home games Makes such a huge, huge difference with the atmosphere there. But crew will have a, you know, they'll have a good following there on Saturday as well, and and they'll make some noise. And unless we did what exactly as we, we did against Grimsby and control the game from start to finish them and, and make them look very an average team. Because Wouldn't crew have won be? some, <clears throat> yeah, crew have won some really big games recently, so that they're doing really well in the league. So it, it will be a a tough, tough game on Saturday against crew. Yeah, and so. I didn't see when we last faced crew. Has it been a long time? It's been, yeah, um, since about 2000 and now it's got to be even before that, when we were last in the Football League, but it might be actually when we were last in League One. So we could be going back a good 20 years around, yeah. Wow. So we haven't played them since then. So, so we don't have, we're not going to be facing former Wrexham players, or could we possibly be fa- oh, facing we, former we, Wrexham players? We could, we could. As far as I know, there's no Wrexham players who, who play for crew. And like Stockport, there was a couple of Wrexham players there. But I don't think there's any anybody a crew that were, were actual Wrexham players now. Oh, okay. So, yeah, no nobody that uh, we have to make sure that they remember their loyalty, their original loyalty to, <laughs> to Wrexham. <laughs> Uh, that's the thing you know their loyalties are to the club they actually play for at the time you know um yeah it'd be lovely if uh they thought oh, i'm playing wrexham today so i won't play as you know as well yeah. as i normally do you know just so they can you know make it a bit easier for them to win but no uh, it doesn't work like that unfortunately that would be something really nice yeah let me yeah, go I, down I to a 80 percent workload today yeah, yeah, exactly. As a kid, I wish I used to think, "Oh, I wish I could be invisible. I could go and trip them up." So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but no, it, it, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Now, historically, between uh, Rexman and Crew, like a non-rivalry, you know, a non-derby. But is there any significant uh, matches or events, moments that had happened with Crew that we share some type of? historical bond, if you will? Not that I can think of, Ryan. I mean, as I said to you earlier, they, they, they always used to be a Boxing Day game, which was, you know, it's very traditional in the UK uh, on Boxing Day. If, if you like football, you make sure you go to a football day on, on football match on Boxing Day. Um, so there's always big, big crowds on, on Boxing Day games. Um, was that a neutral ground or was that always at one of the other... No, it, it was always at either the race course or, or at Gresty Road, which is uh, where crew play. Um, I say they've got a very good stadium. They've got a very big stadium. And as I said earlier, it's ideally located. It's literally just around the, the corner from the train station, just like Wrexham is. So, um, yeah, there's nothing stands out for me with regards to to, to games uh, against crew. I, I mean, I, I went to a few Boxing Day games and, you know, things have changed now. Boxing Day, you could have a real, real cold winter Boxing Day and bitterly, bitterly cold. And, you know, all the players and, and the refs now are big softies because I've seen Wrexham playing when the pitch has been covered in snow and frozen. And Ooh. now a bit of snow on the pitch and, and the games are cancelled. So um, I can, 
the last time I can remember going was that Boxing Day game at Crew, and it, it was bitterly, bitterly cold. And Wrexham won it, ran out one nil winners. So that must have been in the late nineties, I think. But at that time, I was living down in Cornwall, which is like three hundred sixty miles away from from Wrexham. Wow! Uh, and I used to travel up and down there and back to Wrexham in a day to go and watch them play. Wow. Um, yeah. Determination. Yeah. Yes. It, yes. Wow. And, and so you came up the day after Christmas, you went all the way up like 360 miles. Yeah. Round trip, 720 oh. miles. Watch and play. Oh, that, that had to have been a good victory to take back with you for the drive home. Oh, it was a long drive home, Ryan, if we'd lost. I tell you, it yeah. was a long drive home. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then get, hands I, full of Bovril when you're. Yeah, I'd get home about midnight. I'd leave about six o'clock in the morning. So yeah, it was a a long old day. But I did that for many years. Uh, I loved the journey. I loved the journey. It was all part of the experience. Worth it. Completely. Oh, most of the time, it was worth it. And and, and even during our difficult times, Ryan, when you know when the club was struggling and. Had problems with owners, you know. I still made that journey, even though we had, you know, fans then about four thousand. It was important to go and support my hometown team. I always made the journey to make me home games. And you, you were just saying uh, from Cornwall, is that what your uh, flag is behind you? No, that's a Welsh shagger behind me. Oh, okay, I was looking at the letters on the the bottom to try uh, to yeah, make it. Up. It says Cornish dragon at the bottom. So oh, yeah, Cornish dragon. Uh, All right. Yeah. So that yeah. was at the time when I was living down in Cornwall. Yeah, yeah, he used to go everywhere with me. So, um, so yeah. Oh, that is, that's amazing. What? They, um, they, and they so were good trips. You were the uh, part of the original, you know, traveling in games for uh, Wrexham, which probably you know have been going on for years and years of people, you know, from Wrexham interested in Wrexham traveling to go watch uh, match day. Yeah, very true. I mean, in modern times now, people move away from where they're born or the hometown to the work, all kinds of uh, reasons. And, you know, you still get a lot of people traveling from outside of Wrexham, always have done, you know, to watch watch Wrexham play. I mean, there's London, there's a London Reds where there's a huge Wrexham fan base down in London. Um, and they have meetings just like the the there's different supporters groups around around Wrexham and uh, London do exactly the same. I'm a member of the Shropshire Reds and there's like three or four hundred members in that. And so yeah, there's there's many fan groups around the country and obviously it's even grown more now since the takeover. Um, yeah. But going back to the game, you know, I, I'm just happy that we've still got a football club. Yeah. You know, that's why I wasn't too disappointed about the the loss on Saturday. Yes, it was Horrible to lose 5-0, but we're in League Two. We have a football club, we have great owners, and we have a fantastic fan base. And that, for me, is like Christmas every day. You know, being able to go watch Wrexham play where there were so many times where you doubted whether there would be a Wrexham. Yeah, yeah. And then and that it, is the most important thing, Ram. Yeah, and then now that precious thing that is, you know, the the football club, that center of town and community, the, the fragility gets those emotions raised uh, in both directions, both in that happiness and then in the anguish, of course. And all, 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 all that anguish is gone now because, you know, we've got two, two lovely owners, but you know, we went through years of anguish as, as a Wrexham fan. Well, on I mean, that five O loss, we had, you know, some, some people going zero to a hundred on, you know, like, Oh, I'm done with this player, and I'm done with that player, uh, and it's like it's one game. Yeah, oh, it's it's a game of football, run. It's you know it's that happens. You know, even the best teams in the world lose games for for no apparent reason. So, um, as I say, it's just a game. You you take it on the chin, you move on, and you look forward to the next game. And I'm, I'm, I'm just happy we've got a club to support, um, a team to go and watch, and it's even better now because every game is. It's full capacity and it's a great atmosphere in the ground. Last time I ever went to a game where it was full capacity was when I was seven. Wow. Wow. And I first started going to watch Wrexham and it used to be 24, 25,000 there every game. Um, wow. 
So and that's, the this, cop was there, so you had that extra seating that yeah. you could, or not seating, yeah, but standing. That, that was all standing. Yeah, that's where I watched my first game. I used to take a, my uncle took me, and we took a milk crate, which we years ago was we used to get milk delivered to your houses. Yeah, in yeah. glass bottles, and those glass bottles used to be carried in a milk crate. Yeah, and I used to take the football game. I used to stand on it so I could see the game, and, and lots of kids <laughs> used to do that. That's amazing. And did, and, so, but that was only for so long before, you know, you, you had caught up to the melt crates height and. Oh yeah. 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 yeah I mean, yeah. I, I went to one game and I was hooked for the rest of my life. It's, it's a passion you can never fall out of love with for Wrexham football club. I don't know whether you guys in America now are actually feeling that, you know, it's, it's, it's there for the rest of your life. It's in your blood. It runs through your veins. Oh yeah, well, my wife reminds me that I'm heavily invested into Wrexham, so <laughs> like it is, it is a part of me. And as much as I want to go about everyday life and not think about Wrexham, inevitably I bring up something about Wrexham that either has something to do or nothing to do with whatever the conversation or what I'm doing at that time. And yeah, it, it's in, inside you now, Ron. It's it's part of your DNA. Yeah, I I can't shake it. You know, no, if no. if it is a drug, which it feels like it is a drug, <laughs> I'm waking up in you know wee hours of the morning to to watch matches or staying up late plugging in to to watch interviews and you know listening to commentary it, without video. I'll still be listening to audio commentary. Like no matter what there is that drug that I need the fix. I need more. I need more. I've yeah. had the taste. You can your life, has it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look around, it's everyone in my <laughs> everyone yeah. in my family knows now, if it's my birthday, if it's any type of event, you are getting me something Wrexham. And you know I'll be happy, whatever it is. You know that yeah. I will be happy about it. I, yeah. I, I think it's just such a lovely thing that all you Americans are come on board with us. I think it's fantastic. It's I mean, so... I had the pleasure of meeting. Have you met Sarah Jane at all, SJ lady? Yeah. Oh, well, um, not in person, but we've uh, talked a number of times. Yeah. Yeah. She came over to my shop and she came up and saw the pigs, and it was just lovely, you know. The amount of Americans that we meet who are so happy to be at the race course and to see the football team play live, it's it's such a warm feeling that you guys have got involved in our club as well. And um, I hope it continues for many years. I really do. Yeah. And you gave SJ either some earrings or a pendant. It was. She bought some earrings from the shop. She did. Oh, okay. Yes. She bought them. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and, and were they pigs? Is that what it was? Or yeah, the, the, I had a local girl who who makes handmade jewelry, and uh, I displayed them in the shop, and uh, I try and sell as much as I can locally. Yeah, I supplied locally, so yeah, she she liked them and she bought them. That's so cool. It is. That's it a, is. You're you're just making people happy around the world, literally. And how did <laughs> how does that even feel from going from you know you said seven years old and seen a, a, a lackluster crowd and then fast forwarding to now where people, you know, are literally getting into arguments over getting tickets, one person versus another. Uh, it's something that I, you know, five years ago, I'd never dreamt of, you know, never thought of. We keep pinching ourselves, you know, Mark, myself, Che, we all say, you know, we're going to wake up one day and find that this is not real, but it, it's <laughs> it's sublime, you know, that we've gone from being a club that nearly went out of existence uh, with some horrible owners, with a core of only maximum four thousand fans, to to now, as you said, where where fans are literally fighting over getting tickets for home games because there's just not enough tickets to go around, and um, we've just obviously heard that the. The new cop stand has been delayed for whatever number of reasons. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be ready for next season. So this is going to have to continue for the next 12 months, I'd have thought, with the fans complaining they can't get tickets for this, can't get tickets for that. So, But, you know, if you're a true fan, just be happy that Rex FC still exists. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we're able to, to fight and moan about them, you know. 
I mean, I, I don't know whether if I mean I'm going off on a tangent now, Ram, but Go I don't know it. whether you where the, when I lived in Cornwall, 2005, we were going through very dark times at the club, and we had owners who wanted to shut the club down. Mm-hmm. And our Wrexham Supporters Trust first started, which is a group of fans who wanted to take control of the club, but we had no no funds. So, being an ardent Wrexham fan living in Cornwall, I wanted to somehow raise funds to help our supporters trust. Um, to give them some funding to get solicitors, et cetera, et cetera, and fight the cause to save the club. So I, being that, there was nothing I could do locally because I live so far away from Wrexham. So I came up with the idea of collecting all 92 Football League and Premiership shirts all signed by the players. Wow. Um, so I travelled the length and breadth of the country collecting these shirts. A lot of them sent them in to me. I had people... I don't know whether you've come across on the fan site called Red Passion at all, have you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. During the day, that was a very good platform to be on as a Wrexham fan because everybody helped everybody out, but now it's just horrible bitterness on there. So yeah. it, w- it wasn't so toxic before. It was actually... Yeah, it wasn't so toxic before, not yeah. at all. And eventually it took me... Tw- well, it took me nearly three months to write all the letters and find out all the contacts who to send letters to. And it took me 12 months to collect this collection of shirts. Wow. Um, The last one, I bet you can never guess who was the last shirt to come in. And we had to pay for this last shirt. Ah, okay. So so around 2005? Yeah. Um, I'll say Man City. How the heck did you guess that? (laughs) Uh, yes <laughs> our local MP went over there and paid 40 pounds for the shirt and collected it no because man city was doing okay in 2005 right they were they actually were, doing good they were. yeah and they, they, were, they were the last shirt for us to get hold of and we had to buy it off them wow i mean it also sounds like something that would happen from man city that you with all their millions all their millions yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's that's so cool. So you ended up um, collecting all these shirts. Um, all these and, 92 and then, shirts. Yep. Uh, yeah. And during, during our trouble times, we had Fans United game where we had fans from 72 different clubs come to and supported Wrexham for the day. And um, I'm sure you're aware Brighton were very, very good to us, helping us through our trouble mm. time, fighting the whole Albion fans. And Wrexham played in the final in 2005 in Cardiff in the LDB Vans final against South End. And prior to that game, we actually I got a huge clothesline and we paraded it, all the shirts around the ground before the game to wow. try and advertise them. And I had wow. fans from all different clubs doing that for me as well, helping because... Uh, I thought I owed it to them for for their help um, and the support they gave Wrexham. Anyway, eventually the 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 whole ninety two shirts were went to Sotheby's in London, one of the big auction rooms, um, to be auctioned off because it's very unique. You know, it'll be a one off collection. Yeah, yeah. And it only made nine thousand pound there, and I wanted roughly about fifteen thousand. Mm. So I said no, you know, because. It, I just calculated 92 shirts all signed. I thought, well, it's got to be around the £15,000 mark, which in them days was more like $30,000. So, um, okay, yeah. But after about a week or so after the auction, um, a gent contacted Sotheby's who lived on Anglesey, which is a little island off North Wales, beautiful, okay. beautiful island, very well speaking area of North Wales wanted to buy the shirts and he offered me 15,000 for them. Wow. Um, but then he had to take off the commission for the auction house, blah, blah, blah. And we ended up with just over 13,500 to, to donate to the Wrexham Supporters Trust towards their, their fundraising to save the club, really. Good man. Good man, Neil. Yes. And as far as I know to this day, I, a single person, collected the most money for the club for the Supporters Trust. That is that amazing. Role, what my wish would be, Ran, would be to Ryan and Rob to go and contact this chap when we build this new stand and put those shirts as part of our history of what we went through in that new stand. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So anybody out there know Rob and 
Brian. Get onto them, please. Yeah. Now, do you still have the contact of? Uh, I do. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That. Oh my goodness. Let's hope. Let's hope. Okay. What do What do we got to do, Neil? Send the army. What do we need to do to make <laughs> this happen? I, I, I'm going off on a sidekick again. That led mm-hmm. to a guy contact me who is a an, a, an author, a sports author, and he was writing a, a book about football. Um. He he also worked on Radio Two, which is one of the, the national radio stations in in the UK UK BBC Radio Two. Um, and he was writing, a, as I say, a book about football, which covered every aspect of football, from the physio to the managers to one of the players um, to the clergy, because every every club's got a, a clergyman attached to the club. And he contacted me via you know Geraint Parry, the club. Can I be part in the book about the long distance football travel? Football sports because I lived in Cornwall. Yeah. So he came and spent, he came the night before, got up with me six o'clock in the morning, did the whole journey to Wrexham and back and whatever. And I became, and I was still doing the, the shirt collection at the time. And I got involved. I was in this book called Match Day. Okay. Um, and the, chap, the author was called Chris Green. And uh, yeah, another part of it that helped promote the, the issues with going on within the club as well. That's cool. And, the, and, and that was the stuff that literally, saved the club correct yeah it it went a long way to giving funds to the supporters trust to help them fight legally and get solicitors involved to save rex and football club oh man i i mean so clearly we can all thank you and obviously other people like you um a lot of the people yeah yeah for for the work that you did for the team that that you believed in. in Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. It, I mean, it would have been like somebody dying if we'd have lost the football club because mm. it was so close to our heart. You know, my uncle took to my first game, my dad went with me, and it became part of the family. It was was Rex and Football Club. And it it feels very much like that again now, which is you know, all the Americans, you're all all part of the Rex and Football Club family. And it, it's a great feeling to be back into a safe place where we've got a future. So it was great game promotion last year. We're back in the football league, but I'm just grateful every day that we've still got a football group club to support. Yeah. And and your role in the football club has has enlarged too. Because I, I totally forgot till you were mentioning the Welsh speaking area. Um, uh-huh. That like you are, obviously you're a Welsh speaker or for people that don't know, uh, you are, and you've been doing the Welsh announcements at the matches. I was, I don't do the Welsh announcements, um, Ran. Um, I was oh, asked I'm to, sorry. I, I was asked to do that two weeks ago because uh, they didn't have any. I, I walked into the club. Um, we had to get there about one o'clock. And I said, oh, do you mind doing the PA announcing in Welsh today? I said, mm, no, go on. So, yeah, I did that. But normally I do the well, there's, there's something called a chwiban terrenol, which is the final wind okay. whistle. So the chwiban is to whistle. And okay. all... So chwiban. Chwiban, terrenol, terrenol is final. So I do that podcast after the, every home game, which is a, Welsh, a, a summary of the game in Welsh. That's um, you. I've That's listened me. to those. I don't know what they're saying or what you were saying <laughs> during that, but I've listened to them because I just wanted to hear what it sounded like. Yeah, so I, I do the Chwiban Tervonal after the game as well. So I'll be I'll be doing a, one after the crew game on Saturday. Okay. Oh, you know what? Crew is a Welsh word? No, not the way they spell it. No, no. no. Because I, I, I think I saw it, it was originally spelled C-R-I-U. Yeah, that is a Welsh word, yeah. But, I mean, going back hundreds of years in history, the, the, they reckon the border of Wales went way out into England, a lot further than it is at the moment. But um, And crew could very well have been part of Wales at one time. So, so in a way, this could be brethren that are they, they, that are in crew. They play in red and white as well. So, yeah, they, well, they certainly could be. Certainly could be. But I won't try to uh, to butcher the pronunciation of such hard words, but I'm going to try one that I did. I kind of learned. Um, OK. And I, I got to get the the air, you know, in the mm-hmm. in the mouth. So. Uh, Llangollen. Llangollen. Yeah. OK. 
I got Have a you been <laughs> Um, I I went by it. So uh, we were driving mm-hmm. and we went by, and I saw the sign. Beautiful, beautiful town. Lovely big river running right through the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. I I I'm need to go. So n- uh, how far away? About ten miles from Wrexham. Oh, I should have went there. Uh, you, we were yeah. we were driving out. We were going to go and um like look at some of the mountains and some other stuff. Okay. And I saw the sign. I was like, wait, I know that word. Kind of. Clangoshlin, yeah. Well, next next time you're over, and you're driving about, you must come over to Whitchurch. I will. I will. Yeah. I mean, 100%, I will be stopping by Whitchurch. I am going to be uh, obviously not your first American patron because SJ went over there, but but I will be one of the American patrons that takes part in some Whitchurch photography. Who, who... Um, the Welsh word for Whitchurch is Eglwys, which is church. Eglwys. Oh, okay. When, which is white. Or, yeah, so oh. they call it White Church, but they... When they spell it, they, they don't spell it with the E. It's W H I T and then church. Got dropped somewhere along yeah. the line. So it's okay. called Eglouis When. Okay. And uh, Eglouis When. When, yeah. When. Okay. And so When is white. And yeah. then uh, church is Eglouis. Eglouis, correct. Oh, Very all right. Good. Okay. I'm going to. Uh, I actually did this last week. And since my phone's recording, I can't show you. But uh, about a week or a week and a half ago, I actually downloaded du- Duolingo again because I'd used it in the past, um, uh-huh. but started uh, the Welsh language. And I I only did one lesson, but I was like, I want to start recognizing the words and comprehending a little more. So when I'm over, if I go, you know, to that northeast side again, because it was nice, I'd like to, you know, understand more of what I saw and what I encountered. Well, you heard, yeah. If you went over to, um, you go over to Northwest Wales, along towards along the coast towards Canadavon and oh, places yeah. like that. Northwest, yes. They are yeah, very much Welsh speaking over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to uh, Conwy, and Conway, um, yeah. and then I think I'm going to mispronounce this like Carnarvon. Canadavon, yeah. That's very yeah. good. Yeah, Canadavon. Yeah. Okay. This is yeah. No, in the Welsh, in the Welsh dictionary, an F is a V. Okay. So. In, in 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 the alphabet, it's two Fs are an F. Okay. So yeah, but one, one F, F is a V. Correct. So it's Canada Vaughn. Okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah. so Vaughn Vaughn instead of Fawn. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well. Well. Hopefully, I learn. You know, more more of this, and at some point in time, hopefully, I'm I can have a casual conversation with you in Welsh. I look forward to the day, Ron. Yeah. Yeah. We we won't count the days yet. <laughs> uh, I won't get ahead, I won't get ahead of myself, but uh, I'm hoping that some of the pronunciation won't be too difficult for me. We could do little Welsh lessons on here, Ryan. You know, but so I would love it. Yeah. I I would love it because uh, that would help me learn and also spread the word of uh, Welsh language, which is yeah. After all, there's, there's lots of places in America with, with Welsh names. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially around Pennsylvania way, there's a lot of Welsh named towns around there. Yeah, and um, it, it it isn't too. Um, so I speak to some fluency German, and um, I was noticing some of the pronunciation isn't too far uh, away That's from that. Very true. Yeah, it's all it's all from the throat. Yeah. a lot of yeah, which is very similar to the German. You're very true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. So so I'm not I'm not too far away from uh, dipping my feet further into. Uh, into the Welsh culture, which, which I'm more than happy to, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the ride and the journey. Definitely for sure. <laughs> when, so fast forward in a little bit, uh, yeah. back to, back to crew. So looking at the matchup that we do have coming up on Saturday, not a rivalry, not a Derby. We haven't faced wow. them in some time. It'd be classed as a Derby because it's our local, it's okay. our closest ground that we play. So it would be classed as a Derby. It, oh really? Okay. It's essentially, yeah, it would be classed as a derby because it is definitely our closest football ground that we we play. Yeah, our football. But team. as Bill, Bill might say it's a, a derby diet or a derby light. It's derby it's light, not. Yeah, there's no, there's no real rivalry there. There's no, you know, uh, you know, Chester, no, uh, no, you know, or Shrewsbury, which is a another derby. But we hope you might play there next season. So. Um, so no, it's, it's there's no rivalry there between the fans. There's no 
there's no niggle, there's no never have been any notoriety of, of much trouble between crew and, and Wrexham. So um that's why Bill's been saying it's yeah, it's a derby light. It's out of class, more, more like Stockport. Although Stockport's further away than um, Crew and Tranmere, as more of a derby, as in with regards to, there's a lot more niggles between both sets of fans in Stockport and Wrexham, and that's what a lot of people see as a, as a derby because it it creates a better atmosphere and the singing's a lot better. But there is, I don't know, there's that history between the clubs, shall we say? Mm, yeah, yeah. So location plus history makes a delicious yeah. derby. Correct. Yeah. yeah. How how are you feeling about um the match? So you you'd talked about the the loss yeah. at Stockport and bounce back. Yeah, I, I'm pretty relaxed about it. I'm I'm sure Phil Parks would have had words, and I, I'm sure a lot of the players have had words with themselves after after Saturday's game. Um, they've had a week off to to recover. Um, they've done some serious training this week. I'm sure trying. You know, watch the game over from Stockport and see where the errors were and what went wrong. Um, but they'll be they'll be ready for the game on on Saturday against Crew. You, you know, mark my word, they'll they'll be a different team out there. I would have thought again on Saturday. I don't I think it was just a blip against Stockport for whatever reason. They weren't on the game 100 percent and um, took the fingers off the pulse. Can we say? And I think Saturday will be a totally different game again. I think we'll be back to our old ways and the wrecks we know. And I'm hoping that Phil Parkinson will start with the. The same starting eleven that we started on Saturday. Okay. I can't see any reason why to make any major changes. Yeah, and, and I, I know, I know there were a lot of fans were criticising Toza, but they didn't know behind the scenes that unfortunately he's recently lost his father. So he he's been going through a lot as well, you know. So um, fans are fickle. Yeah. Fans are really fickle, which is unfortunate. Three fans don't moan about it. They're just glad that they're there watching Wrexham. Yeah, and you, you know. I guess at a point in time, it's easy to stop thinking about people as people. And they're just, you know, a number that's on the field. That's That's either. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we're we're, all human beings. We're human beings. Yeah. 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 And, you know, if you went, what, five years ago or 10 years ago to a Wrexham match, it was so much more intimate because of the cameras and stuff. There was so much more that you could get to know the players on a one-on-one basis um, that, hopefully as the team continues to grow as the fan base grows, that there still is that remembrance of, you know, these are people. They true, Ron. They, they, they are people. You know, I think, you know, the documentary, I don't know whether you saw with Paul Mullen, you know, yes. in tears, which, you know, they're people at the end of the day, they go through emotions. They go through the emotions that we go through. So, you know, they can be hurt like we can be hurt with words or what people might say. And, uh, you know, I think fans should, should, Think of that, you know, you know, they're, they're human beings. They, you know, they go through all these emotions just like we do. They're, they're not a robot. Yeah. Um, and we all make mistakes in life, whether it be on a football match or in our everyday lives. Everybody's prone to making mistakes. Yeah. And and what better love that you would have for the club than to be understanding during those trying times and those troubling times instead of like raising the rod to punish somebody for making a mistake and yeah I mean, we, saw with, we saw it with howard you know where yeah. uh you know they, oh, a ruin, lot of people unleashed it, on him it can ruin a player that can run it really can you know it can you know it, it would make you know as a goalkeeper because you stand out there on your own all the time you know all the abuse you got online you can make him you know want to cringe just going out on the pitch and make him uncomfortable you know and it's mentally will have a detrimental effect on you so you know get behind the team yeah. yes you might be yeah. Get behind the team. Yeah. And, and there's that like old adage or or philosophy of um, if it doesn't make it better or it doesn't make things better, then why bother saying it? You know, Correct. if you're if you're going to just go and, you know, denigrate or put somebody down, if that is not going to make the situation better and could possibly make it worse, then mm-hmm. why do that? Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Because I think, you know. You know, the fans, you know, being so critical, we're, I say we're, we're all human beings um, and we all make mistakes in life and 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 they're on the pitch as a team. You know? So, you know, if they lose, it's not one person hurts, the whole team hurts when we lose. So mm. they'll, they'll, they'll regroup after that and they'll come hopefully back better, as a better team this, this coming Saturday against Crew. And I, I really hope for the fans out there who have been critical of, of our performance because, you know, we, 
we all have a bad performance in it. No matter what line of work we do, you know, we have bad days. They come out and show that, you know, they are a good team. It was just a one-off for whatever reason. The whole team had an off day um, and proved that, you know, they are a good team. I think because we we did so well last year and won so many games, I think a lot of fans, I think that's what I might be saying, was uh, they expect us to win every game in this league as well. But, mm. you know, it's, it's a higher league. It's a... The players are, have got better abilities than, than the players that were playing in the National League last year. And um, they'll have done our research on it thoroughly, the, the opposition managers, and they know what we're good at. So, yeah, you can't win every game, Ryan. I mean, as I keep saying, I'm, I'm just happy to be able to go there and watch Wrexham. Yeah, it, I, I mean, for the majority of us, we're just happy for the opportunity to get to see Wrexham uh-huh. and and watch it. Yeah. I mean, part of something that's beautiful to be just a small little sliver, a part of it is it feels special to be a part of something that. I, I, and I feel very privileged about in the role that I do being able to go to every home game, you know, as a, as a match commentator. So, you know, with Mark and Che and with Bill last season and um, Andy, um, because yeah. we're lucky we can see every game, you know, when we, we try and put over to the audience listening what's going on in the pitch and in the ground and what we're thinking. And um, I just feel honoured and privileged to be able to do that. And I've only been doing it for two years on the commentary. I've been at the club, I think, five years now. Um, I used to operate the scoreboard before we've got oh, a brand new okay. scoreboard now. So I used to change the scores, put all the subs up on there, the attendance, all that. So I used to work the scoreboard. Or the PA data. I don't know if you're aware of the PA data, which is you have to sit there on the mobile phone, and and there's a central hub in the UK where every football club sent all their their squads foul or not foul, yellow cards, red cards, goals, okay. corners. People have got booked. Yeah, yeah. And, we and you updated that. that. I used to have to do that. We oh. none of us like doing it, um, especially when you had like four subs come on at the same time. You have to send all that information into this. Center, but yeah, we do that. But and then myself and Che were asked, would we like to do commentary? And I think we've never looked back. We really enjoy, you know, that you guys out there in America and Canada and, and everywhere else in the world are out there listening to us and, and what we're doing. So I will, I, I think, I personally feel very privileged, and I'm sure Mark and Che do as well, that we're in a position that we're able to see every game and be able to broadcast to, to people all over the world of what we're watching in front of our own eyes. Yeah. And you bring such a good spice is what I'm going to say. You bring a good spice because there is, there is Mark who is trying to stay, you know, as professional as possible and not let the emotions get away. I don't yeah. think you have the ability to stop. I, the emotions. I have to learn that for the away games, especially when we were at Tramia. But I, oh, I can't jump up. I can't jump up. <laughs> but we we absolutely love it. I mean, I mean, I'm sure that the away fans don't appreciate that, but we absolutely enjoy like when you're singing along to the to the songs and the chants, and then when you jump up and the headphones are and you know the celebration. It's pure. It it, it is. It's actually pure. It's just instantaneous, you know. And I love I love the singing part. I I love getting involved with the singing. You know, if, if I go to a game without doing the commentary or whatever, I'll go because of the singing. I, I love the singing. But let me the ask you, let me ask you this, because that's one thing that a lot of us struggle with is following whenever the new chants come out. And then mm-hmm. what are the, you know, exact words to, yeah. to the chants? Um, because you're just there every day, do you learn them? Uh, just through osmosis or yeah. are you you hear a new chant and you're like well let me go look this up real quick and then see what all the words are no i listened to it a few times and then i think oh yeah i got it now yeah 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 okay well you you heard it here from the pro first uh you <laughs> <laughs> if you if you would like to know the chance in the most efficient and best way you need to show up to the match but not only show up to the match um, you need to commentate on a, <laughs> on the home matches because that's going to be the best way to soak in that wonderful new new songs and chants, which it seems like most of the chants are like a different take verbiage 
of similar chants that are for other players around the leagues. They do, yeah. Yeah, they, they just make their own songs up about a, using a certain piece of music or a certain song. They'll change the words and, and just make up their songs. So where these chants come from, I'm not sure. Somebody must sit there and think, oh, we can make it. Especially, if, obviously, they've, they've started one for McLean now, who's, who's playing for Exum. Yeah. yeah. So somebody must think, oh, I'll make a song up for, for McLean, you know, and... Yeah, who I don't know, but uh, yeah, I, I just love the atmosphere when everybody, especially when the whole ground is is rocking, shall I say, and singing and getting involved. It, I think yeah. it's absolutely it puts goosebumps on me and my hair oh, standing yeah. up on the back of my neck. I I will uh, name drop it a million times, um, but when I was there for the Notts County game, oh, um, you had a game and a half. Yeah, I was so enthralled with the singing that I just started singing probably like what you're saying. I just started singing in the words that I didn't know. I was just picking up the words and going uh-huh. with it. And one of the chants that just gets stuck in my mind and it happens in everyday life. Um, maybe not often enough or maybe too far often is, you know, everywhere I, we go putting on a show. Yeah. Watching. That's, that's a good song. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's things that rhyme with it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so there'll be things that rhyme with that in everyday life. And I'm, you know, me and Anna are around somewhere and it might rhyme with watching ref some FC or FCC or something. And then I'm, I'm just going, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and she's like, looks at me and I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to do it. I couldn't not do it right now. It was the perfect opportunity too, because we can hear a portion of the crowd when the crowd gets loud, but sometimes there's singing that's going on that the microphones don't pick up that, you know, we don't, we don't hear them in the same way that you do within the stadium on the grounds. Well, we don't really hear them either. To be, we've got earphones on as well, so oh, okay. it's a lot quieter with earphones. But we've now actually gone to a handheld mic rather than the mic which came across your mouth. So we're hoping that they will pick up the crowd a lot better than the the, the microphones which are in front of your mouth. So, um, oh, okay. So, and yeah, that's a upgrade hope, too. They look like they've come out of the, the arc, these microphones. They look so <laughs> old. But, uh, but there's were, a lot so. of... Sports announcers that uh, use that style. Yeah, yeah, mm. they, they, they have got. They're not one of these with a the foam on. They're just like a, a metal rod with a. You just push it to your mouth and speak into it, you know. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it, but they sound a lot better than you know when you're ordering a, a burger at a fast food drive-through. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh-huh. like they they do they do sound better than that. Um, <laughs> If if you were so bold, Neil, um, yeah. would you want to give or attempt to give a prediction for Saturday's match? 3-1 to Wrexham. 3-1. Okay. Yeah. And the follow-up question is, if it is 2-0, I'm not saying I'm calling it right now, but if yeah, yeah. during the game it is 2-0 or 2-0 yeah. and that second goal has been scored, Crew has not scored against us yet. Are you going to be able to stay in the seat as the goal feel, is scored? You feel a lot more comfortable when that second goal goes in. Oh, no, I won't stay in the seat, man, at all. Yes. I won't stay in the yeah. seat for the first goal. Oh. <laughs> after no. after no. that 5 nil loss, uh, you, you got to jump up, right? You got to. Yeah, yeah. I need some excitement, man. I need some excitement to goals. Yeah, yeah. I need, yeah. I need that energy rush, that rush of adrenaline inside me you know when they score i need that well yeah there's been hey, seven days go. yeah yeah exactly it, it yeah. that energy has to go somewhere it, it can't does, stay but... inside yeah no and it, you know no. who I, would want to run into the person who can cont- like contains all that energy and bottles it up i mean that's nah no nah. yeah right I've, I've got scars down the back of my legs from jumping up and you catch your legs on the back of the seat. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and I've got scars from the last home game against Grimsby still on the back of my legs. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know that as a as a supporter, as a fan, you, you need these shin guards on the back. I need the back, <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah, do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tight up there in the commentary box. 
<laughs> you stand There's up and catch your leg, back of legs on the on the seat. So, oh so, man, yeah. I I didn't so, know uh, there was a risk I'll, to your health. I'll be more than happy to come back with with scars on the back of the legs after Saturday's game. Hey, if that's what it takes to get the win, exactly, that's, that's what it takes to get the win. Oh my that's goodness, the pain I have to go through. Yeah, I'm more than happy to go through it. <laughs> well. I, I am going to recap as best as I I can for the uh, listeners and viewers out there. So we have had Neil Williams on here for teaching us how to wreck some. We have learned some very important lessons in the world. Uh, one of them, if you would like to be the, uh, the scoring person, uh, it's going to be the most miserable job you have on the grounds. However, if you're going to be commentating, it's... A very rewarding job. However, you need to guard the back of your legs because you would inevitably uh, injure yourself in the course of victory. So this is this is a well lesson learned to all of us learning our ways of of when we come to the match. Maybe I won't wear shorts. Maybe I'm wearing pants so that I, I can. Pants, Rod. I was wearing oh. I was wearing jeans <laughs> and I still scratch the back of my legs, but. <laughs> well, throw that out the window. It doesn't matter if you're wearing pants. You're still getting injured. Yeah. <laughs> well, Neil, thank you so much for coming on today. Everybody out there, go ahead and follow Neil on Twitter X. And uh, I didn't remember all the names, uh, the letters after and numbers after uh, Neil Williams. But what I will do is link it into the description um, on YouTube so that you could just click on it and follow. Catch him on um, commenting on the home matches. You will notice his voice. And if you try and attempt the Welsh version of the final whistle, um, which I have forgotten how to say by now. A quip on ten of an all. Uh, a quip on ten of an all. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's my best deal. attempt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We will work. We will work on that. And, and a coming... Because you heard it here first, he's already agreed to it. Uh, coming on the pod on a regular basis to teach us Welsh, the uh, the new five minute segment of Welsh the Williams way, uh, the alliteration yeah. for the people out there. Welcome back to Iran, Munhech, Welsh Ladid. Thank you very much, Ran, and enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, how do I say? It? Is it Dios? Dios. Or Croissant. Croissant is your welcome. Okay. Uh, Croissant. Yeah. Croissant. Croissant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I will work on that. I will work on it. I will work on my Welsh lessons. And yeah. um, also, anybody uh, out there, go to Whitchurch. Go to Whitchurch Photography. Um, get yourself and your family some, some photos and uh, take advantage of your local business people that are out there and supporting them like uh, you support Wrexham. Thank you, Ron. Yeah. Well, uh, Neil, again, thank you so much. Look forward to speaking to you again. Uh, and as always, up the town. Up the town. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> yeah, th thank you, Neil, so much.